Well, good morning and welcome to Wake Forest. You know what we got to say? It's just another day. It's just another day with a great football crowd. It's just another day with beautiful Carolina blue skies. It's just another day for another multi-million dollar enhancement for Wake Forest athletics. We do this all the time, right? So I want to start by recognizing there are a bunch of people who have made this day happen. And uh, I have to put it back on my glasses to make sure I can read uh, them all. But, but as you all know, there's been a lot going on. And what you're going to see uh, at the conclusion of this ceremony, you're going to see uh, two incredible clubhouse spaces for our student athletes. Uh, but I want to start by recognizing uh, the people from Vinoy Construction, John Michael Broyles and Keith Rowland, Jill Perry from our facilities office, John Shinette, the Vice President for Facilities, and Kim McDaniel for Walter Robbs. Give these people a big round of applause. Have them wave their hands wherever they are back here. A couple years ago, we transitioned management of Wake Forest Athletics projects into uh, the direction of Vice President Shinette. And I can tell you that this project has been delivered in record time uh, with unquestioned efficiency. And they were here till midnight last night sweeping the floors and cleaning up. And I can't thank uh, our partners uh, enough in that regard. We've also got a, a number of trustees that are here. Um, Shelmer Blackburn is here. Debbie Lambert, who is the chair of the Athletics Committee of the Board of Trustees, is here. Uh, Mike Smith is here. Um, I believe that uh, uh, Beth Hopkins, I've already seen, uh, Life Trustee Beth Hopkins. Give Beth Hopkins a round of applause. And as you may know, uh, I just want to make everybody, if you're looking for somebody to go to lunch with and talk Deacon Sports, Beth Hopkins, after moving away for a year, could not live without us. She's back in town, and she's available for any kind of pro bono advice you need. All right, Beth, thank you very, very much. Uh, we have a number of uh, basketball alums from both of our teams. Uh, we have Roper Halverson, one of the greatest of all time, from our women's basketball team. Um, we have, not yet inducted, but soon to be inducted and recognized, uh, we've got um, a Wake Forest Hall of Famer and current NBA star, Ish Smith, right over here. Give it up for Ish Smith. You know, looking around this room, we've also got a bunch of uh, great Wake Forest coaches. I believe Tony DeLuce is here. We got a four o'clock game right here, four o'clock game at High Point. You can run over and watch the Deeks at High Point and get back in time for the football game. Uh, we got, we're off to a great start in women's soccer. We're 3-0 and 1. We've already beat uh, Auburn. I mean, we beat Georgia. We tied Auburn, and so we're off to a great start uh, in women's soccer. Um, uh, in addition, our uh, men's golf coach Jerry Haas is around here somewhere, and that is the reigning ACC champion men's golf program. And lo and behold, I think our women's golf coach, uh, the ACC Coach of the Year, Kim Llewellyn, also reigning ACC champions. We're going to keep going here. I want a big round of applause for Maddie Overby right over here who she and her team have produced this event. It's spectacular. Every event gets better and better and better, Maddie. And Maddie is like Teflon, man. Whatever you say to Maddie just rolls off her. She just gets, gets stuff done. So thank you very much, Maddie, for you and your entire uh, team's uh, leadership. Um, there's some good stuff to eat over here. Hey, Donnie, where are you back there? Everybody say hi to Donnie, right? There's no better person to welcome you to Wake Forest and epitomize the hospitality that Wake Forest is supposed to be about than Donnie and our friends from Harvest Table. So thank you very much, Donnie, for everything you do to make every day feel like a family uh, day here in Wake Forest. Uh, so we also have, I should say, the reigning men's basketball coach of the year, Steve Forbes in the ACC, and Janetta. And then I don't know if you saw her last night on social media, but Megan Jebbia took the stage in front of 2,000 students at our pep rally last night with their arms up. Already, she's already bought into Steve and Jerry and Kim about winning championships. Uh, we're on our way under her uh, leadership. Um, so uh, today in our program, I'm going to be recognizing our, our leader, uh, President Awinti, and then we'll progress uh, to introduce uh, Dr. Guth uh, and Mitch Shaw excuse me, Dr. Guth and Chris Paul, and Mitch Shaw will be part of, that, um, a part of that engagement. But this is a really, really incredible day. And three years ago, on September 12th, 
2019, I think was the date, we actually opened the Shaw Basketball, the Shaw Basketball Complex and Sutton Sports Performance Center. It was a massive leap forward. And at that point, and I know a number of you were there, and at that point, you know, we had completed a lot of great stuff, you know, started by my predecessor and our athletic director emeritus, and also a soon-to-be inductee into the Wake Forest Hall of Fame, Ron Wellman over here. Please give Ron a hand. Great. This, this massive leap forward uh, for Wake Forest, but at that point, we knew we weren't done, and we had a couple things that were really important that we had to complete, and so our uh, development staff, Barry Faircloth and Mike Piscatelli and that whole group, uh, they, they started talking about it, and we had, a, we had a significant investment already from the Paul family, and we had a couple gifts other here or there, but we did not have the most important element, which is the homes for our men's and women's basketball teams and our football team in modern 21st century, cutting edge, world class uh, spaces for those teams. And so our, our staff came up with the idea that we're in the fourth quarter of finishing the best on campus athletic facility uh, 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 quadrant in the country. So this is a fourth quarter drive. And back then in 2019, we had three or four million dollars pledged towards that deal. And we established over a period of time, got into the summer, got into the pandemic. Things are not looking good around the world. But our goal was we were going we to sprint out of the pandemic, right? And you all remember that Bob McCrary in the depths of the pandemic made that incredible $20 million gift uh, for the F McCrary football complex. And so now we had about $25 million raised. And at that point, the athletic director set an expectation for the staff. We're going to raise $50 million for the fourth quarter drive. Right? And we set that expectation, again, in the depths of the pandemic with a lot of uncertainty. And we stand here today thanks to lots of great leaders out here, thanks to Mitt Shaw, uh, who, who finished it off most recently, exceeding that $50 million fourth quarter goal in less than three years, over $51 million now. Give everybody a round of applause. Give yourselves a round of applause. So the even better news is that we wouldn't want our development officers not to have something to do, right? And so we've just extended the goal. It's now $75 million, and we got a bunch more stuff we're going to do to make Wake Forest Athletics uh, even better. So congratulations to all of you, and as we continue to march down the field, we appreciate everyone's uh, support. Um, I would want to introduce a couple more people, and then I'm going to recognize, uh, uh, um, introduce and bring to the stage uh, President Winty. Uh, but I, I mentioned our Athletic Director Emeritus, Ron Wellman. We also have another uh, soon inductee into the Wake Forest Sports Hall of Fame, um, the, uh, uh, an incredible friend and leader, our women's basketball, uh, excuse me, women's golf uh, champion coach uh, prior to Coach Wellen, uh, an incredible leader for Wake Forest Athletics, as well as Wake Forest Women's Athletics, Diane Daly. And then we've got great leadership and camaraderie across our campus, as Dr. Winty likes to say, radical collaboration. At least a few of my um, cabinet colleagues, I see uh, Dean Jonathan Walton. Stand up, Jonathan. All right. Jonathan Walton, the Dean of our Divinity School, record enrollment at our Divinity School, and I encourage you, both homecoming and family weekend on Sundays, a great service in Waite Chapel that Jonathan is bringing to our community. Um, Vice President Dr. Shea Kidd-Brown uh, is here, uh, right back here. Come on, Shea. All right. Our brand new Vice President for Campus Life, doing an incredible job of ensuring a safe and fun environment uh, for, our, for our students uh, at Wake Forest. And then Jim Dunn, uh, who is the CEO and Executive Director of Verger, the Wake Forest Endowment. Yeah, for all of you who have had up and down in, uh, investments this year, go talk to Jim because he's straight up, right? Right? The philosophy has worked. Congratulations, Jim. Give Jim a round of applause. So about a year and a half or two years ago, uh, President Hatch had announced his retirement. And, uh, you know, of course, in that moment in time and transition and an interview process started sometime in the fall of 2020, I guess, fall of 2020, and then December of 2020. Uh, and then it was the day that our men's basketball team uh, beat Georgia Tech in uh, Joel Coliseum. I think it was January 30th or February 1st, 2021. Uh, President Winty had, uh, uh, with great leadership from the Board of Trustees, had accepted the position to be Wake Forest 14th president. It was announced shortly thereafter. And then immediately, here's what happens when the new athletic director. Is that new president gonna support athletics? 
Right. How many of you asked me that, right? right? Well, this new president came to Wake Forest in part because of athletics and because of the way Wake Forest Athletics has fulfilled its role to, to, to build the community, to serve as a rallying point for the community, to help spread the word about Wake Forest, and to serve student athletes who go on to be great, great leaders. And I can tell you, after, uh, is it 15 months, 14 months, or something like that? Uh, we've crossed some uh, really interesting rivers together, and I can't tell you how excited I am uh, to have a president uh, who is so direct and focused on excellence in every aspect of our university. Uh, and Dr. Winty has stepped up already as an executive mem a member of the executive committee of the Atlantic Coast Conference uh, at this really important time in the in the evolution of college athletics. Uh, she is a world-renowned biochemist, which means. She's very organized, she likes data, and she wants to move on really fast, right? So you better keep up and go with her, and she's making us all better. Uh, and, and then last but not least, if you watched our, our second annual uh, Wake the Demons on the, on the quad and on Hearn Plaza last night, uh, one of the best features is our president riding in with hordes, like about 2,000 of them, students, chanting her name, cheering as she rides in with the deacon on the motorcycle. So we couldn't bring the motorcycle in this morning. You have to walk, President Winty, but come on up and share with your university. Thank you so much, John, for that introduction. I never know what he's going to say, right? But it has been just my most you know, greatest honor to be able to come here and really deeply immerse in all aspects of the university. I am incredibly proud of this athletics program and incredibly proud of everything that we are doing together. And part of that togetherness is being here today to celebrate the dedication and opening of the Chris Paul Family Men's Basketball Clubhouse and the Dr. Carol Guth Women's Basketball Clubhouse. These are incredible facilities, absolutely incredible, and we have all of you to thank for that. So my most sincere gratitude to all of you. Now, to Dr. Guth, thank you. Thank you so much. In addition to your pioneering medical work and the advocacy that you have continued to support, you have also long been an advocate for improving the lives of student athletes. Thank you. to Mr. Chris Paul. As one of our most renowned student athletes, you know firsthand the role that camaraderie and relationships play in building winning teams. To you, Chris, to Jada, to the Chris Paul family, to the Paul family, thank you for your incredibly strong support in so many ways. My most sincere thank you to both of you for investing in this relationship, which is going to help us build future relationships. The importance of relationships is directly reflected in everything we do here at Wake Forest, but I think it's especially reflected in these facilities. I remember when I got a tour last summer, and I turned the corner and I saw the men and women's basketball facilities right there, side by side, couldn't distinguish between, you know, the investments, the investments are strong across the board, and that pleased me in a very deep way. These clubhouses are going to connect seamlessly with this gymnasium right here, which is, again, another reflection of our investment in these important programs. It's also going to connect seamlessly with the Shaw Basketball Complex and with the Sutton Sports Performance Complex. We think about how all these things weave together to provide the very best experiences for our student athletes and to allow our coaches and staffs to be successful. So this new nexus of infrastructure, yes, you might need to lay breadcrumbs down sometimes to find your way through, <laughs> but um, it's going to help us with the recruitment, with the retention, and with that relationship building, and with our program's prestige. Undoubtedly, this will also support us with winning relationships, winning championships on the court. In my view, this is truly an exciting time 
for basketball here at Wake Forest. We had turnaround double digit winning season last year with our men's basketball team. I don't have to tell all of you that. Thank you, Coach Forbes. Thank you to your staff and to your team. And Coach Megan Jebbia, thank you for joining us. I remember Zooming with you when we were, you know, going through that process. And thank you for your positive energy, your focus, and the ethos that you are bringing to our campus and to our women's team. I can't wait to see what we achieve this year. But of course, it's always about more than even what I've reflected on so far. Trustee Mitch Shaw, I'm reminded today, or want to share today, of your father's words from a couple years ago. I guess that was in 2019 when the Shaw Basketball Complex was dedicated. And I watched that video when I was, you know, interviewing because I wanted to know one of the members of the search committee well, okay? And that recording of the ceremony, he called you a high achiever, reached through the dignity of labor, and by leading a balanced life. That's certainly true of yourself, but it's also true from what I know of Dr. Guth, of Chris, Jada, and the Paul family, and we want it to be true for our student athletes too. That's why we strive to provide them with what they need to be balanced, dignified, collective, and yes, high achievers. So thank you all for being here today. Thank you for your commitment to Wake Forest and to our athletics program. And thank you for celebrating with us. Go Deeks. Thank you, President Winty. Can I come in a little bit late tomorrow morning? <laughs> Maybe like nine. All right, thank you. All right, uh, we have an incredible trailblazing leader that we will next honor, and I've asked Emily Ritchie uh, and to bring, uh, go ahead and bring Dr. Guth forward. Um, but you're looking at someone uh, who all her life uh, has blazed a trail of, of success, uh, adventure, an accomplishment. As one of the early female graduates of the Wake Forest School of Medicine, going on to an incredible career of service in medicine in California, and coming back to Winston-Salem for another incredible career of service and estab helping establish the regenerative medicine uh, department at Wake Forest, uh, Atrium Health Wake Forest Baptist, and um, adventure. So for you, those of you who haven't seen it, our next guest and honoree jumped off a bun bungee jumped off some bridge in Australia about four or five years ago to celebrate, well, let me say, at some time ago, to celebrate a very significant birthday, right? And then this summer, while we were all working to finish up the clubhouse, Dr. Guth was off safariing in Africa, continuing uh, to live and explore uh, and inspire. Uh, Dr. Guth, if you would come on up, I just want to be able to have a moment with you here to recognize your incredible leadership and generosity for our athletics programs and the expectation of excellence that Dr. Guth shares with all of us. Please welcome Dr. Carol Guth. Well, this is awesome. Uh, thanks to everyone for your support, and actually we're here to fortify our whole programs of our, both our women and our men's basketball teams. These facilities are here because it took a village. As a dedicated village, we came a long way, baby. This facility is certainly a far cry from when I first attended Wake Forest. And that was on the old campus as a transfer student in 1955. We were still a very small college. There were only 100 women students in my particular class that year. That was also the era when scholarships were only provided to men for athletic scholarships. Intramural programs were the only means by which women 
could regularly participate in a college sport. And I recall no women facilities in the Gore Gym on the old campus. So that meant that when we went to the gym, we had to wear our shorts, but we had to cover up our legs, ladies. And when we moved to the new campus in 1956, that still persisted. Prior to Title IX, when women intramural sports and basketball teams played basketball, we played archaic six-on-six -six rules. And you're probably too young to even know what that means. That means we had six players, three guards, three forwards, and we couldn't cross the half line. Couldn't even touch the half line. Forwards were the only ones allowed to, to shoot. Furthermore, we had to bounce the ball twice. No dribbling allowed. We've come a long way, baby. I'm telling you, we've come a long way. Not until nearly two decades later, after that move, when Title IX was enacted in 1972, did Wake Forest start to provide women with athletic scholarships. And that was in the day when we had Marge Crisp and Doc Casey leading the program under the AD Gene Hooks. As a reminder, the passage of Title IX prevented federally funded sports programs from discriminating on the basis of sex. So prior to that Title IX enactment, gifted women athletes were long deprived of developing or showcasing their skills in any sport. They belong to what is referred now to as the lost generation of women varsity sports. During that transform for transformative era for women athletes, my husband and I lived in the San Francisco Bay Area where I practiced. Back then, Wake Forest had very successful men's programs for basketball, such as was played by Tim Duncan, Randolph Childress, Rodney Rogers, Muggsy Bogues, and Josh Howard, among others. But on the West Coast, in the 90s, close to me, down the peninsula, was Stanford. And it had a comparable program for women that actually excelled their men's program. In fact, they even won several NCAA championships. So that made me wonder why Wake Forest couldn't excel to that degree. While living in California, we were frustrated by the inability to follow results of any Wake Forest team because the West Coast media had no interest in Wake Forest. Furthermore, there was no web, no internet, and we certainly didn't have cell phones. And by the time I had retired from California practice, my husband had died, so I moved back to Winston-Salem. And the first men's game that I followed, that I attended, was watching the Deeks and Chris Paul bewilder the wolf pack and finally sent them home with their tails tucked between their legs. <laughs> I also recall watching Derek Ahambe overpower Lady Deke opponents on a regular basis. Having played intramural basketball, and more recently participated in the state senior games, my dream has been to witness in my lifetime program improvements that will serve as a foundation upon which the legacy of championships can be accomplished. Now I believe with Bob McCreary's visionary incentives, John Curry's endearing leadership team, our renovated facility and an accomplished new coach, Jibia Gibia, <laughs> Megan Jibia. 
that we are on a track now for excellence to become reality and then become morphed into championships. We all look forward to watching our talented Lady Deeks excel and even exceed expectations on and off the court and throughout life. And to you, the team, wherever you are, when you succeed in life, as we know you will, please remember your alma mater and pay it forward as a thank you. And to keep the ball dribbling for the future generations of Wake Forest. Because we, the village, and you, the team, have come a long way, baby. Thank you, Dr. Guth, for that incredible message. So Mount Rushmore for Wake Forest Athletics has a few particular faces, and one of them is Mitt Shaw, an incredible leader, imaginer of what is possible, and determined and dogged driver of us all forward to achieve what some of us may have once thought wasn't even possible and couldn't even imagine. There's no one who has continued to advocate, lead, invest, care about his school more than Mitt Shaw. Mitt, please come up for your introduction of Chris Paul. John, thank you. Um, you know, the bounty of our friendship um, gives me such great joy, and uh, I'm so proud of this transformational journey that we are on uh, at our alma mater. Uh, Dr. Wente, uh, you know, being a part of uh, the search for our 14th president was one of the great honors of my life. You are absolutely the right leader at the right place at the right time. We are going to win championships together across our campus and on this court. Thank you. And Dr. Guth, I'd like to say uh, a special thank you to you uh, for your commitment across our medical campus, our Renolda campus, uh, but for especially allowing us all to be a part of your village. Uh, there's an entire generation of Wake Foresters uh, that are going to have an incredible opportunity uh, to excel because of your generosity, and most especially our next generation of outstanding women leaders. Thanks to you as well. So I'd also like to give a little special shout out uh, to uh, one of our favorite sons, Ish Smith, um, who is here and was uh, a big part of, of, uh, of not only our basketball program today, but like many others, has come back uh, to really invest in, in our future. Ish is here with his beautiful mother, who I have not seen since uh, you were a 5'9", 135 pound kid um, here at, at Wake Forest, and your cousin as well. Ish, thank you for all you mean uh, to our university. This is a special day. Charles, you and Robin are two of uh, our dearest friends. And CJ, you and Chris are my little brothers. You have been um, incredible mentors to now our adult children. And together, Chris, you and Jada, and little Chris and Cameron and CJ, you and Desiree and Carter and Chloe uh, are a big part of our hearts. You know, when we first met, um, it was a day like this in 2002. And uh, I was here on campus as one of my very first uh, um, interactions as a university steward. And Charles and Robin were here with their uh, two teenage sons visiting with my dear friend, Skip Prosser. Now, um, in 2002, there wasn't all the technology, but if, if there was, you know, instead of calling me, Skip would have said, you got to come by the offices, heart emoji, heart emoji, big hug. And uh, Skip was in awe. 
of the Paul family. He would share with me that Charles and Robin were so special. They raised this incredible family full of love where hard work, faith, and gratitude defined the Paul family name. Skip believed that leaders were cultivated and then nurtured. Those special ones were the key to transforming good teams into great ones, and the greatest ones into families. You know, the ones that like strong branches on a tree, they grow in different directions, but their roots forever remain as one. Those roots that Chris planted, leading Wake Forest men's basketball to our first ever number one ranking, NBA Rookie of the Year, two Olympic gold medals, 12 NBA All-Star teams, All-Star MVP, President of the NBA Players Association at arguably the most important time in our league's history. Every single team that Chris has been on has been substantially better than before he arrived. Now, Coach Forbes says it well. This is a player's program. Everyone arrives here from somewhere, emboldened by the name on the front of their jersey and in honor of the one that's on the back. This is a place that encourages you, develops you, fulfills you, enabling all of us to chase our dreams and to lead lives that matter. 20 years ago, from that point to today, on that summer day, Chris's jersey now hangs in the Joel Rafters next to his college coach. Together, their grace continuing to inspire others to be what they could become. As a father, husband, son, grandson, friend and now mentor, Chris is undeniable proof that the American dream is not only alive and well, it grows and lives in the very soul of our mother so dear. A witness to the hard work, faith, and gratitude that continue to define the Paul family name. It is indeed my great honor and privilege to introduce you to my little brother, Christopher Emmanuel Paul. Man, I'll keep this brief. Uh, Dr. Wente, Dr. Good, thank you guys so much uh, for allowing this to, to take place. A uh, big thank you for everyone who's here. Uh, when we set out to do this, it wasn't about this. <laughs> Just to let you know, I didn't know it was gonna be a press conference. I didn't know all this. I thought we was gonna come, see what the locker room looks like, maybe cut a ribbon, say what up to the fellas, then get back to work. Uh, I think for me, that's what it's always been about. It's been about the work, right? It's not necessarily about the celebrations. It's about getting back to the work, and that's the most important thing. And um, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's so many familiar faces in here uh, that shaped my life, right? I think Mitt, I don't know how many times he was going to say it was 20 years ago, but uh, <laughs> like I don't have enough teammates reminding me how old I am, you know, but it's, it's crazy to think um, that I remember Mr. Wellman, you know, to see Mr. Wellman in here and me and Ish, man, it's so crazy to see Ish over here. Um, like, I'm the old head. I remember when Ish was a youngin. <laughs> you know what I mean? Thinking about coming in to see his career, right? You talk about passing it on. You know, Ish is going in his 13th season in the league. The average career in the NBA is four years. You know what I mean? So to see him doing what he's doing and to know that, uh, you know, when I was here, if there was anything that he's seen that could help him, like, I'm, I'm grateful for that. Josh Howard. Josh Howard, who was the OG, 
is the OG from Winston-Salem who really made me want to stay here at home. You know what I mean? Who made me want to go to, to Wake Forest, you know, to see Davion here now. You know, I, I think it changes for you when you play for as long as we played. When I first came into the league, I was, after my rookie year, they probably thought I was still a student here. You know what I mean? Like I was coming home, I was always home, and now life has changed. You know, my, my phone's ringing now because my kid's on their way to school. You know, and it, it, it changes, and um, I'm, just, I'm just grateful. When I came in here and I seen Ashby, Ashby Cook, to see all these different familiar faces. So I say thank you to everyone who played a role in this even taking place. Uh, this gym right here is where I practice at every day for three to four hours. Yeah, long practices. That's way too long for practice. <laughs> Partly probably why I went to the NBA. <laughs> but uh, I'm, I'm forever grateful for it. Coach Forbes, what you done done with the program here has been unbelievable. I'm serious, I remember sitting on those Zooms and you never know what you're gonna get. But you've been amazing to see how the energy, right, the energy that's back here at Wake Forest the way it should be. To hear all the coaches of the years, the champions and all that stuff is what, what Wake should be about. And I say these last couple things before I end. Um, Mitt, I gotta say thank you. Like people don't realize uh, none of this would have been possible without you. And I say that because when I was a high school kid sitting at the Joel watching Wake play, play Duke, right? I was a high school kid watching Wake play Duke and I'm sitting behind Mitt, right? And Mitt, ever since that day, since I was a high school kid, it don't matter if I all-star game MVP, anything like that, you always been the same. And you the one who showed me what it's like to give back, right? Like, I appreciate you. Like, you show me what it looks like. Even when sometimes I would play on the road or something like that, you keep a lot of us connected, right? Because life happens. You go on. You do this. You do that. So, Mitt, we got a group chat. My brother, Mitt, John, all of, man, I don't care where I'm at. When Mitt texts, I see what's going on. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I, and I appreciate you for that because you, you show us that it's bigger than us. Right? And this stuff that we do is all about legacy, right? All about legacy. It's not about me, it's about my family, it's about everybody. And then the last people I like to say thank you to is my family, my crew, my gang right here. Like you see them all right here, my family. Like, like I'm, uh, you know, Miss Caldwell to tell you, I, I was a little iffy when it came to class, <laughs> right? Back then, though, fellas, we had to check, we had to clock in and clock out. You had to get 10 hours of study hall a week. It ain't like that no more, huh? Yeah, that's nice. But I, I, <laughs> I, I tell you this straight up, like, as I got older, I got more into history, right? I love knowing history, knowing why we are where we were, wh where we are and how we got there. So to hear about the old campuses and all these different things and knowing that there were only 100 females, right? That's amazing, right? I'm, I'm, I'm a girl dad. I have a 10-year-old daughter, right? So to know that when I was here, we used to come sit in the gym and watch the women play pickup. And when they finish, we hoop. Now they got two courts, <laughs> right? You don't have to wait. And so to hear about that history and that lineage, all I could think about was my family. Right, my family born and raised here in Winston-Salem. And I'm telling you, growing up, I gotta ask my grandparents, but y'all probably never seen this campus, did you? <laughs> Real talk, probably never seen this campus. And so for me, when I was thinking about going to college and I had all these offers from all these schools, um, it was my family that kept me home. You know what I mean? It was my family, it was the fact that every time I played at the Joel, no matter win, lose, or draw, I had my crew there. I had my gang there. And still to this day, 18 years in the league, I still got my crew there, my gang there, every single time. And I'm so grateful for that. And that's something that I think some people take for granted, but I don't. I don't. So I appreciate y'all so much. My family, um, you know, it says, doesn't say Chris Paul locker room, it says Chris Paul family. We could have just said something for the family. <laughs> that would have been cool too. But um, it's just, it's just amazing to be able to, um, to be here with my family. Uh, Winston-Salem, Wake Forest means so much to me, right? I wish my kids were here, but they just started school. But, uh, you know, you can move away, but they can never take home out of you. You know what I mean? And so I'm honored, grateful for everybody that made this happen. And go Deeks. Thank you all.
Before we conclude the program, I just want to mention a couple things to both Chris and Dr. Guth. You know, so our staff does a great job of coming up with mementos, but you do ask the question, what do you get for CP3 and for Dr. Guth that they don't have already, right? So we got a couple things, and again, I salute Maddie for this, but right here, Chris, is A pen made from the wood of a tree from Wake Forest University's campus and from the campus of West Forsyth High School. And right over here, Maddie, turn it around and show everybody, this is your original letter of intent. <laughs> signed by Mr. Wellman and Coach Prosser and you. Now, it was also signed by Mr. Paul. All right, so we got that. And then Carol, we mentioned your world traveling. And so right here we have a pendant because you're all over the world. With, on one side is the strolling deacon and on the other side is the long, long, longitude and latitude coordinates of the Carol Guth Women's Basketball Clubhouse. So you always know the coordinates of home no matter where you are. Great job, Maddie. I also learned a little history. There have been some great incoming transfer student athletes at Wake Forest, like uh, Dr. Larry Hopkins, right, Beth? And I learned today that Dr. Carol Guth transferred into Wake Forest, you know. So we've got a great history of impactful transfers who have been so additive to the Wake Forest community, and uh, I believe that will continue. Um, uh, I want to recognize one more time uh, three people. Um, Karen Hart Hughley, where's Karen? Raise your hand, Karen, please. Um, Jill Perry, where's Jill? All right. These are the women that made this construction project finish happen, leading Wake Forest construction projects across uh, the academy. Thank you very much, Jill and Karen, for all the time you've put in. Uh, and then last but not least, one of the products of our basketball program um, was not a prolific shooter or an, ex an effective defender, uh, but our former men's basketball manager, Craig Zakaruski, right back in the back, has continued through and continues as our associate AD uh, for a bunch of different stuff. And he's also the person that when we need something to get better, Craig makes it happen. So Craig, thank you for all the time uh, that you've put in on this project and, and others. And with that, I will be counseled later as to all the things I've missed. But we don't want you to miss the opportunity to tour the Chris Paul Family Clubhouse and the Dr. Carol Guth Clubhouse. The Dr. Guth Clubhouse is straight out these doors to the right. Uh, the Paul Family Clubhouse is out the doors to the left, up the stairs, and there's also an elevator that will take you up there. 5.05 tonight is the, new, the, the, the resurfaced post-COVID Deacon Walk um, in front of the uh, Deke, uh, Deke Town Fan Zone, brought to you by Farm Bureau Insurance, and we look forward to seeing you all there. Go Deeks!